DJ Hunter for three. This guy here, I love this guy right here. Dreams to come true. Wow! It is all over. Michael Jordan. Kiss to be remembered. Unbelievable. It is the most famous scooter in college basketball. Georgia State head coach Ron Hunter hopes to motor his way to the Sweet 16, and of course. He'll have his trusty stool on the sideline. And with that, we welcome you to Jacksonville, Florida, for a third round game out of the West region as 14th seeded Georgia State takes on the Xavier Musketeers. A look at the bracket in the West region. The winner today advances to Los Angeles for the Sweet 16 on Thursday against Ohio State or Arizona. A game going on right now on CBS. And hi again, everyone, with former Villanova coach Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. Jamie Urdahl will join us in just a moment. Well, by now, you've probably seen R.J. Hunter's shot, and you've probably seen his dad fall off his stool. How could you miss it this week? So, Coach, the question, how do they keep this magic carpet rod going? Well, the Georgia State role players played very well against Baylor, and that was with Without Ryan Harrow, who also averages 19 points a game and is available today. But R.J. Hunter can't play 40 minutes like he played in the last game. He only had one field goal for the first 37 minutes and 20 seconds of that game. Then he scored 12 points and stole the game and a place here in the round, in the third round of the NCAA tournament. And for Xavier, Matt Stainbrook had 20 points in the win over Ole Miss on Thursday. He assisted or scored on half of Xavier's field goals. He's a tough man to stop. Well, he's very tough, and they want to get him the ball on every possession because not only can he score around the basket with that terrific left-hand touch that he has, but he's also a tremendous passer. Five assists in that last game. He's the kind of guy that can make everybody on his team better from the center position. Three of the four games on Thursday here in Jacksonville came down to the final possession. What will today bring? Find out next. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by AT&T. Subway Restaurants. And by Bud Light. Moments away from tip-off here in Jacksonville between Georgia State and Xavier. And just moments ago, Jamie Erdahl caught up with Ron Hunter. Coach, you've been recasted. You've been such a trooper with all of this stool coverage. Have you even had time to think about this game? You know what? We do what we do. Uh, one of the things that I just told the guys in there is that this has been a great story, but people forgot I got a good basketball team. These kids can really, really play, and we're excited to play. Now, you told us before the round of 64 you were going to enjoy this as a dad. Is that exactly how that's been playing out? I've been enjoying it as a dad ever since Sunday, and it's been great. I'll continue to do that. All right. What's the key today between RJ or using Ryan Harrow? Well, what we got to do is we got to rebound the basketball. It's good to have Ryan Harrow back. We'll bring him off the bench. That's 20 points for us that we'll be able to use in this game. So we're excited about it. Good luck, Coach. And Stay on your stool, please. Well, if I fall off, that's a good thing. That means we're going to L.A. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> good stuff with Ron Hunter. Thank you very much, Jamie. As we take a look at the starting lineup for Georgia State, Kevin Ware starts again. But as Ron Hunter just mentioned, Ryan Harrow is available, did not play Thursday because of a left hamstring injury. And for Xavier, D. Davis had four three-pointers in the win Thursday against Ole Miss for head coach Chris Mack now in his sixth season with the Musketeers, of course, played for Xavier, was a two-time captain under Pete Gillen. And he's trying to get Xavier into the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2012. Jamie Lucky, Don Daly, Lee Cassell, our officials underway. A spot in the Sweet 16 is on the line. You know, you wonder, after all the attention they've gotten the last day and a half, this is a quick turnaround. Are they going to have their concentration ready for this game with what's been going on? There's no doubt the Panthers have done a number of interviews, whether it's TV, radio. They have been everywhere enjoying this moment. But now it's time to play. 
Washington down low. Off glass, no, and Max Steinberg with his first rebound. Now, Xavier's primarily a man-to-man -man team, but in that game against Ole Miss the other day, they probably played 90% 1-3-1 zone. That was man-to-man. -man. Let's see how they do it in this game. Yeah, Chris Mack said after that game that he thought his 1-3-1 zone completely neutralized Ole Miss. They held Ole Miss to just 32% from the floor. Well, they're going to play against a really tough matchup zone that changes its look depending on which side of the floor the ball's on. Stainbrook cleans it up inside. He was 8 for 10 in the win over Ole Miss for 20 points. Also had nine rebounds, five assists, two steals, and a block. He did it all. Crowder trying to answer, no good. And far the rebound, but he fell to the ground, and it's a travel. You know, Andrew, I was just going to say, I want to see what Ron Hunter does to get R.J. Hunter going early in this game. He knows they dodged the bullet. If you told him he was going to play 37 minutes and get one field goal and beat Baylor, he would have said there's no way. He's not looking for that today. He wants to get him off early and often. Remy Abel is one of Xavier's top defenders. He was guarded. Guarding Hunter there as Green's baseline jumper is no good. They hold people to 38% defensive field goal percentage. Georgia State is a tremendous defensive team, and even though they play zone, they have nine, they average nine steals a game. That's top six in the nation. Very aggressive, just like that. And there's the turnover. Ryan Green holds on to it. As Ware. Back to Green. Missed the lay-in and hit the deck hard. And now Xavier out rebounding Georgia State 5 0 early on. And you know, Andrew, it's those kind of turnovers, because as you see, they don't really pressure you. But when you try to get it in the lane, they come from behind, they dive at you, they do a lot of different things out of this zone without pressuring you on the perimeter. They forced 21 turnovers against Baylor on Thursday. Lost it, but he is fouled going up. <laughs> Fouls on Marcus Kreider, the junior out of Dayton, Ohio. Far just 43% from the line this season. Well, first-round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues today on ESPN2 and ESPN3. For more information on game times and listings, just go to NCAA.com. And Ryan Harrow has checked into the game, replacing Ryan Green. Harrow has only played six minutes in the last three games because of a left hamstring injury. He told us before the game he has it wrapped tightly. He averages 18 points per game. Let's see what he's got. Well, to think they're 10-0 without him, I think is one of the most incredible things I ever heard because they're not even a high-scoring team, and they have two guys averaging 20 points a game. They've been playing out without half of that. And R.J. Hunter is on the board. Hunter only had one field goal in the first 37 minutes and 21 seconds on Thursday. He's got one just over three minutes in here today. Xavier's got to look to get the ball to the foul line area, just like they got it to Stainbrook right there on that last possession. They, able, they were able to go high-low. Stainbrook with the left hand, and that's what makes him so dangerous. But you can't let him go to that right shoulder. Some, no one made him go the other way. Again, Baylor didn't make him go the other way, and now Xavier's letting him go to that right shoulder. You got to make him go the other way. Yeah, Andy Kennedy of Ole Miss said everyone in the building knew that he was going to go to that shoulder, and we still couldn't stop him. Four points, three rebounds already for Matt Stainbrook. Nice dish to Washington. Georgia State is a pick and roll team, and Xavier does not play very good defense in the pick and roll. They're over 300 in pick and roll defense, and that was an example of it right there. Nearly a steal by Hunter. Abel the other way, blew it for three. Trayvon Blewett has struggled his last two games, shooting just two for 11. Ware, free throw line jumper, he's fouled on the shots. Kevin Ware will shoot two when we come back. Georgia State down by two. Back 
back in Jacksonville with the Powerade sideline report. Here's Jamie Erdahl. Well, Andrew, I am joined by the other half of the Hunter family, arguably the better half of the Hunter family. I'm sure they would say wife and mom, Amy. I know this what this week we've seen it play out between dad and son, but what has this week been like for you? It just it's great to see the culmination of all their hard work. They've worked hard for this, very hard for this. You don't seem like a nervous person. Is that accurate? Um, I am a Libra, but I have my times. Believe me, I have my moments. <laughs> all right, over to older sister Jasmine, who is here from Chicago. You're very close with your brother, RJ. What has this been like for you watching this play out? It's been surreal. I'm just ready to wake up. It's so much fun. It's been an exciting time for all of us. But as the older sister, do you kind of take it upon yourself to make sure RJ keeps his head at the right size? Yes, I text him every morning perspective, just perspective, because it's so much happening. I just wanted to keep grounded. Well, Andrew, Jasmine is getting married at the end of May, and she is fully anticipating her father to roll down the aisle with her. How do you feel about that? As long as he's there, we're good. He'll make an entrance like normal. All right, the better half of the Hunter family up here in the stands, Andrew. That's going to be some father of the bride speech coming up in May. <laughs> One of the first things RJ said to his sister Jasmine was, I'm going to be in one shining moment. He said that growing up, they always used to watch it together as a family. It's, of course, the montage at the end of the championship game. That was one of the first things he said. And I think it's a lock. 100% sure he will be in it. Jalen Reynolds has checked in for Xavier. And Ron Harrow still out there, has not attempted a shot yet. Of course, started his career at NC State, played there for one year. Then he transferred to Kentucky, where he redshirted the year that the Wildcats won the national title and started 23 games the following season before coming here to Georgia State. This is his second season with the Panthers. And they are the fourth highest scoring duo in the country, Harrow and R.J. Hunter. So playing without him, they've been really successful. What a shot. D. Davis from high above and the shot clock expiring. Only was a 31% three-point shooter this year, but yesterday was on fire. Davis hit four threes in the round of 64 win over Ole Miss. And see Xavier going to that 1-3-1 one, one zone that they used so effective, effectively against Ole Miss the other day. You got to get it in the corners against this defense. Crowder inside does not get the roll, and Reynolds the rebound. Abel quickly in transition, counted and won. Well, the best way to beat a zone is to beat it before it sets up. And that's what Xavier does here. That's part of the game plan by Chris Mack. Let's push this thing up and see if we can beat the zone down the floor. That was a classic example and a good finish by Abel. Foul was on Marcus Kreider, and that is his second. And Ryan Harrow returns to the bench. Isaiah Dennis has checked in for the Panthers. And I'm guessing that's not a great sign with a kid that's got a hamstring, because it's the type of thing you would think you would like to keep loose. It's his left hamstring, and he has it wrapped tightly. He's going to try to give it a go today. Just plays a couple of minutes before returning to the bench. Remy Abel is very tough at the top of this 1-3-1. He's about 6'4", and he really does a good job of faking and retreating at the ball handler to make him give his dribble up. Green nearly lost it. Over to RJ Hunter, deep three. And the rebound is loose. D. Davis and Green fighting for it, and the possession arrow favors the Musketeers. Well, Ryan Harrow, you see his season numbers. Harrow and Hunter combined to average 38 points per game. That's the fourth best duo in the nation. And you know what's amazing about that? That they beat Baylor without Harrow and with R.J. Hunter having four points until there were two minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game. And other guys stepped up, including Ryan Green, who was in double figures for the first time in his career. And now they go 1-3-1. They use a lot of different zones, Georgia State. Reynolds draws the double. That pass deflected out of bounds. Georgia State's one of these teams, as I said earlier, nine steals a game because they pick the right spots to double. If a guy's on the baseline, good place to double. If a guy's stuck on the sideline, good place to double him. 
And Coach Marcus Kreider is staying on the floor with two fouls for Georgia State. Yeah, that's way too early in this game. He should be coming out for at least five minutes. Georgia State does not have a lot of size. Kreider is the team's leading rebound here. And a three by Miles Davis. A 9-0 run for Xavier. He is their best three-point shooter. Has made the most this year and shoots a very good percentage. Harrow is back at the scores table, so is T.J. Shipes. That's where you have to get the ball. And Kreider converts. You've got to attack the seams of a 1-3-1, which right on top is really the foul line extended area. Right in there, get in the gap, and try and get it in that lane, and then to the corners. Inside, and a foul is called on Curtis Washington. That is great post position by Jalen Reynolds. He makes himself very big, gets a wide base, and he's so strong. If you get stuck on the high side at all, like Curtis Washington did, he's going to seal you up and take it just like that. Reynolds made the Big East All-Tournament team, averaging 11 points and five rebounds, but in the win over Ole Miss on Thursday, he was 2 of 12 from the floor. We asked Chris Mack about Reynolds' performance, and he said he felt like he was rushed. He was just moving too quickly on the floor, which could happen in an NCAA tournament game. Well, there's no doubt. He caught a couple of balls in the middle of the lane, and he kind of shot jump hooks before he got himself square. And that's why, you know, those rush shots, he naturally is going to miss those. Already six different Musketeers have scored. One more free throw for Jalen Reynolds. They are a very balanced team, and they're the top ten in the nation in assists. This team can really pass the ball as a group. And yeah, Musketeers have six players that average at least eight and a half points per game. One of only five teams in the country. Nearly a steal, and now a foul is called. That's on Jalen Reynolds, his first. They don't mind playing half court. You know, Xavier's been very successful in the NCAA tournament over the years. And one of the reasons, even when it was Sean Miller and Thad Mata and Skip Brazer, all those guys were able to have their teams play half court. That's why they've been successful. Crowder to Shipes inside, looking for position, and he's got it. Now a little 2 2 one three quarter court trap and Harrow back in. They use that just to try to slow Xavier up a little bit, try and keep him out of their rhythm. J.P. McCura has checked in for the Musketeers. Dangerous three-point shooter. Fars jumper no good. Dennis skies for the rebound. Harrow has not shot yet. Other side. Tough pass, Shipes somehow comes away with it. Now it's tipped over to Farr. First turnover for Georgia State. Xavier gives it right back. And an offensive foul is called on Isaiah Dennis. Xavier up 17 to 8 on Ron Hunter and Georgia State. A new look today for the Panthers head coach. The NCAA told him to put a little extra padding on his now famous stool, which actually has its own Twitter handle now, at Ron Hunter's chair. 111 followers, in case you were wondering, as of earlier today. Also, he had to get a new cast because when his son hit that incredible shot on Thursday and he fell off his stool, he cracked his cast so they recast it hunter yesterday first of all that's a professional tape job on that no on kidding that stool i have to tell you the trainer must have spent more time taping that stool than the players he said as long as we keep winning they can cast my entire body 
You might have to with the way he is on that sideline. So animated and a turnover. Kevin Ware up ahead. Ware lays it in. And that's a good example of how this team likes to play. They force turnovers, and they'll get out and transition off those turnovers and make some easy ones. Ware only had four points on Thursday. He admitted he was a little bit nervous, the butterflies of being back in the NCAA tournament, of course, two years ago. Broke his leg in that gruesome injury while he was playing for Louisville against Duke in the regional final. But they run clearly a matchup zone. That's why you see the players pointing and talking things out so everybody knows who they have. And a foul is called on Shipes. And he talked about some of the role players that stepped up throughout the course of the game with R.J. Hunter not playing well until the final minutes. And Shipes, who was certainly one of them, he had five rebounds and gave them a lot of energy off the bench. The bottom line is they were able to offset getting killed on the glass by Baylor by forcing 21 turnovers. The one thing about this zone, it doesn't allow Stainbrook to get his hands on the ball as much as if it were a man-to-man. Saber has two dangerous three-point shooters on the floor right now with Miles Davis and Makira. Instead, they go inside to Stainbrook. That's exactly where you need to put, get the ball against a 2-3 zone. And he has such a good feel for the game that if you double him, he'll find the open guy. If you don't, he's going to put it in with a very soft touch with that left hand. Ware trying to use the glass, and he banks it in. Back-to-back -back buckets for Kevin Ware. was a late call on R.J. Hunter. Absolutely late. They should have let that go because D. Davis got around it without... The, it was a foul initially, but if you're not going to call it, they could have let that go. It's not like he lost the ball there. I mean, this is clearly a foul, but the whistle came much later than the foul. Davis and Hunter, good friends. They go way back. Hunter grew up in Indianapolis, and D. Davis, a native of Bloomington, and after RJ's incredible shot Thursday, it was D. Davis that texted him, congratulations, look forward to playing you. And a whistle. And a three-second violation is called against James Fall. It's not something you see very often. No. I think I've seen about four the whole year. Some of these calls have a way of working themselves out, don't they? Hey, the foul is just four. I don't know how that happens. Yeah. It's kind of strange. Georgia State has made six of its last eight shots. They trail by seven with nine and a half minutes to go in the first. And good move by Xavier going back to the man-to-man -man defense. Hunter does not get the bounce shooting over his friend D. Davis. A lot of contact again. No call. Blew it. Corner to Makura. And an offensive foul it is called on Trayvon Blewett. The one thing you can't do is leave your feet like that and try to pass the ball. You leave your feet, it's got to be a shot and know where you're going and what you're doing. Blewett's dad, Renardo, coached Trayvon in AAU in third, fourth, and fifth grade. They were team tempo back in Indianapolis. You know who was on that team? R.J. Hunter. A lot of Indianapolis connections here between Georgia State and Xavier. The lob to Shipes, throws it off Makura's face. Out of bounds to Georgia State. Yeah, and that was not done on purpose. Shipes had, that's the only way he could get this ball off of them. He wasn't trying to do that. It just happened to be, he was out of control there and was just trying to do whatever he could. Ow. That hurts, but it was not done on purpose. Well, Chris Mack told us yesterday that Makura has a high pain tolerance, and that's a good thing after that last play. 17 on the shot clock. Ware drives at Makura. Ware lost it. Swings it over to Harrow. His first shot. It's good! And we have a foul coming down the floor against Makura. Well, you're going to see Ryan Harrow here. He's going to go the baseline. And the ball gets kicked out. 
And that's what happens when you draw that much attention on a drive into the baseline area and he finds somebody out on the perimeter. And then Makuro with the elbow to where? The refs will take a look to see if this was a flagrant one, but Makura has been called for the foul. Makura a little frustrated, maybe, after taking that ball in the face. Well, we already saw a situation this afternoon, and you're going to see right here. Right of your screen, Makura throws Ware into the Xavier bench. I don't want to say throws, but nudges him into the Xavier bench. And now the refs... We'll decide if it's a flagrant one or not. Well, you watch McCure right here. No, not a flagrant. No, definitely not. But it's a 9-2 run for Georgia State. And they've cut it down to four with 8.43 to go. So following the foul, Georgia State basketball again and a good sign for Ron Hunter that Ryan Harrow drains his first three. Jordan Sessions did not play on Thursday. He's in the game now for the Panthers. Shipes and Davis get tangled up on the perimeter, and they're going to call a foul inside against Matt Stainbrook. That's his first. This is one of Xavier's dilemmas with this man-to-man -man defense. These pick and rolls, they're going to get pick and roll to death against this team. And here comes another one. This is a double pick and roll. to Session down low, off glass and good. Jordan Session averages two points per game and only six minutes per game. Well, there's an example of how a great player makes his teammates better by drawing attention. RJ Hunter, the block of Stanbrook, far recovers for the Musketeers. Abel inside, he's fouled. Well, right now, Stainbrook can't get off that time. A great block. Back in Jacksonville with our game summary. Xavier is crushing Georgia State on the glass. The Panthers have eight field goals by seven different players. Only one so far from R.J. Hunter, but he can beat you in other ways. Well, we always talk about how great players make their teammates better. Watch R.J. Hunter there coming off this double screen on the baseline. And now we're going to get a freeze right there. Look what happens. A little extra attention from far, because he's the best player on the floor, allows Sessions to get open, and that's what we call a great player making his teammate better. Because far had to pay a little bit too much more attention on R.J. Hunter and leave Sessions open for a lane. Remy Abel off the line for two. You can watch live games on your Amazon Fire HD, Windows, or other connected devices with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. Abel makes a pair. Xavier back to the 1-3-1. I think it's a pretty good defense to have in the pocket, especially with a team that pick and rolls this much. Xavier 7 of 7 at the line so far. They've got to tag that seam right there between 11 and Abel on top. That time Harrow's 3 won't go. Davis up ahead to Abel. He lost it right to Jalen Reynolds, who's fouled. Give Jalen Reynolds a lot of credit for the way he runs the floor on this play. He doesn't just lay back. He's coming full speed, and that's why he's able to get that ball and get a foul. First foul on Kevin Ware. As I mentioned a moment ago, Xavier has not missed a free throw yet. They're 7 out of 7. Good free throw shooting team on the season. Third in the Big East at 72%. Curtis Washington back in for Georgia State and TJ Shipes to the bench. 
Reynolds and Matt Steenbrook, the only teammates in the country with at least 300 points, 200 rebounds, and shooting at least 61% on the season. And Xavier is still perfect at the line. That kid has tremendous potential. As you said before, all Big East tournament had a great tournament in New York. Shot 60% from the floor, and that run for Xavier all the way to the championship game before losing to Villanova. Blair, 17 foot. Xavier plus 10 on the glass right now. Now keep in mind, Georgia State was minus 18 against Baylor and they still won the game. Tipped away by Washington. Great defensive play. That was a surprisingly poor pass by Matt Stable. Hunter was open momentarily, and they couldn't get it to him. They got to split this scene here right between Abel and D. Davis, between 10 and 11, and now 10 and 15. Make those two guys guard you. Here's Hunter, guarded by his longtime friend Davis. Hunter, no. R.J. Hunter now one for four from the floor. Corner three is good. He is tough to stop. And where'd the pass come from? Matt Stainbrook. The other thing about Stainbrook, not only is he a good passer in finding guys, he always throws the ball right on their numbers so that the quality of that pass affects the quality of the shot. If it's on the numbers, you're going to make a good shot. If it's not, you got to pick it up, you won't. 7-0 run for the Musketeers. Five and a half to go in the first. to shoot Hunter to Harrell for three. His second of the day. Well, he hasn't done much in a while, but he's doing something today. Georgia State trying to fire up its fans here in Jacksonville. We've got a good crowd again, just like Thursday. And Harrell with the steal. Great defense that time. They know that Xavier wants to get the ball to Stainbrook in that foul line area. They cheated at that time and made the steal. Isaiah Dennis was at the scorer's table, and after that steal by Harrell, Ron Hunter sent him back to the bench. I've pulled a couple of guys back now and then, too. Hunter for three. Back to back triples for the Panthers. I mean, that was not good defense by D. Davis. You got to know who you're playing. We know his range is deep, deep. Ten points off turnovers already for Georgia State. They had 21 in the win against Baylor on Thursday. Abel blocked by Washington. Reynolds the putback. Didn't take long for Ron Hunter to ditch his jacket. Four minutes to go, first half. After that three, back to the man-to-man -man for Xavier. Washington off the great look from R.J. Hunter. And what's it off? Another pick and roll. The pick and rolls have been very tough. Chris Mack has some tough decisions to make about how to defend that. The big problem is Stainbrook does not get back quickly after he hedges the screen. Miles Davis, deep three. In and out, and tipped out to Abel. A fresh 35 for the Musketeers. Stainbrook passes, and that's a perfect example right there. He's unbelievable. He guys, he throws dimes on the perimeter. He throws dimes big to big. 
He told us yesterday he gets more enjoyment out of an assist than scoring a bucket. I can see that. He's got two today. He just has a great feel, which usually big guys don't have as good a feel in terms of where their teammates are. Hunter for three. What a You better get out on that man, I can tell you that, because he's got range, and he's shooting over D. Davis right now. I mean, over Miles Davis. Georgia State has made four in a row. The lead is two for Xavier as we approach two minutes to go in the first half. And mind you, Georgia State only makes five threes for the whole game. And a bump by Session on the baseline. Well, Georgia State is making that move. And this time, R.J. Hunter not waiting till the end of the game. You better get out on this guy. Big time range. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by UPS. State Farm. and by Southwest Airlines. A beautiful Saturday evening in Jacksonville, Florida. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. R.J. Hunter starting to heat up over the last couple of minutes. He's now got eight points and three assists. Well, this guy does a little bit of everything, but he's certainly picking it up from the earlier in the game now than he did the other day against Baylor. This kid has big range. you got to be up on him a lot closer than you're seeing there from three because he's got good size. He's 6'6". He's a lot bigger than Miles Davis who's on that side of the floor in that 1-3-1. you got to be out on this guy early. On Thursday, Georgia State trailed Baylor 16-6, went on to win the game. Tonight, they trailed Xavier 17-6, and now down by two. Xavier misses the front end of the one and one. Xavier, 10 out of 11 from the free throw line, which is a big reason why they had this lead, but they have nine turnovers to two for Georgia State. And zero turnovers for Georgia State in the last nine and a half minutes. And they move R.J. Hunter all over. Sometimes he's in the corner, sometimes he's on the top of this zone. That's a smart move. Try and make it hard to find him. Hunter, deep three. Way off. And the rebound to Miles Davis. I mean, if he could have made that, I could have given him five. <laughs> he was that right close. in front of us. <laughs> but we know his range. We saw that on Thursday. Stainbrook draws the double. Abel wide open for three. And the rebound to Harrow. and Reynolds the rebound. Quick shot by Ryan Harrow. Reynolds had the size advantage with Hunter, misses the shot, and they fight for the rebound. Shipes comes away with it. There's a two-second differential between game clock and shot clock. They should hold for the last shot. Where are you going? Ryder threw it out of bounds. That's a big mistake. Ron Hunter not happy with that. They should have gotten the last shot of the half. Coming up on AT&T at the half, we'll get you caught up on all the latest tournament news, highlights, and updates. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. That's the first Georgia State turnover in the last 11 minutes and 5 seconds. And they really should have never even tried to do what they were doing. They should have just held it out. And now Chris Mack definitely going to get the last shot of this half. And he brought McCure in, J.P. McCure, who's a tremendous three-point shooter. Good move by Coach Mack. Also has Miles Davis on the floor. Already has two threes today. This 1-3-1 one, one does make it a little bit more difficult to hold the ball, but they're basically... They're basically in the time now where they can attack. But it's a different kind of attack. Four seconds left. Reynolds throws it down. Great pass by Matura. They closed out on him hard because they know he's a great three-point shooter. And that left Reynolds alone on the box.
Emphatic finish to the first 20 minutes by Jalen Reynolds, who has 10 points. Well, you're going to see here, they close out hard on Makura, and nobody rotates back when the ball got skipped from one side of the floor to the other. Good offense by Chris Max, Musketeers. Let's go over to Jamie Erdahl. Coach, defensively, how tough is their offense in a constant pick and roll? Uh, it's extremely tough. We've gone back and forth from man to zone, and, um, you know, we were a little disheveled on, on backside coverage, but more importantly, we've got to do a better job of taking care of the ball. Our turnovers are, un, are, are, are undoing right now, and we've got to be better with the ball. Are you finding it difficult to get the ball to Matt Stainbrook in the middle? No, not really, but we've turned it over a couple times trying to do that, and then once he's got it, he's gotten raked a couple times that uh, he's got to be a little bit strong with the ball, but we're still going to play through Matt, whether he's a high post or low post. Coach, thank you. Thanks. Nine first half turnovers for Chris Max Musketeers, but they went nine out of ten from the free throw line. That is the end of the first half with the score Xavier 32, Georgia State 28. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. AT&T at the half is presented by AT&T, mobilizing your world. A swing just before halftime. Georgia State probably should have gotten the last shot of the half. Instead, it's Jalen Reynolds throwing it down for Xavier, and the Musketeers lead it by four at the break. That leads us to AT&T at the half. Good to have you with us here from our Atlanta studio. Matt Weiner, Seth Davis, Martin Klebs, and with us from Pittsburgh throughout the day, head coach Jamie Dixon. Jamie, good to have you with good us. Good to be here. Once again, let's get to it. Uh, Georgia State, the darlings of the round of 64 after the upset win over Baylor, they are on a roll, literally, figuratively, every other way you can think of. But Xavier out early, Trayvon Blewett to Remy Abel, and one. D. Davis, Miles Davis, 9-0 Xavier run. And if not for Xavier turnovers, maybe my team, this is a different game because they got out quickly. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They exactly did. And you give up uh, Georgia State a little credit because they stay with it, but Xavier has to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. R.J. Hunter is the Panthers' best player and, of course, the hero of the round of 64. And look at the range there. He's only a 30% three-point shooter, but he will take it from anywhere. Forget penetrating, getting the ball inside. Just shoot over the zone. That's exactly. what R.J. Hunter <laughs> And he did it with back-to-back -back threes. There's Reynolds to end the half. And as things stand, a four-point game, 50% shooting for Georgia State. Xavier at nearly 56%, but again, Mateen, nine turnovers, so they've taken six fewer shots in that first half. Yeah, and that's what it is. That's the best thing about Georgia State. They force turnovers, and right now, in that first half, what kept them around was flying, flying around all over the floor and keeping their hands active. They're staying booked. You cannot look in telegraph passes. That was Stanbrook's fault on here, but you got to give Georgia State credit for being active on defense. Why? Look how they're fighting over screens and getting their hands in passing lanes. That's what kept them in the game. Their defense kept them around. Then uh, Harrell came in and made a couple shots, and Hunter made a, a couple shots after that, but their defense will kept them hanging around. And those turnovers have more or less negated a huge advantage on the boards for the bigger uh, Musketeers, 17 to 5 there. Defensively, it seemed like Xavier's best look was that 1 3 1 zone, which disrupted what Georgia State was trying to do, but then they got out of it. Well, they're a man to man team, Xavier, and they, they're going to throw that zone in about midway through each half, and, and they had some success with it, but I think they believe they're, they're, they win games and, and their program is, is their identity is their man to man. So, you know, there's only a few that were going to stick with that, that zone all the way through. Coach Hunter will do it, Coach Beheim will do it, but uh, they're always fearful of a three, a couple threes going down, and, and they got back to that, back to that man. And that's why they're winning the rebound battle, too. What stuck out for you? Well, uh, Xavier's own surprised me that they played as much as they did. They've only played zone on 11% of their uh, possessions all season long. And, you know, uh, Matt, you referenced R.J. Hunter's three-point shooting percentage on the season at 30%. I almost wonder if it's a little bit of fool's gold because I thought Georgia State had some decent success getting inside the paint. That guy in the middle of the 1-3-1, he's kind of like a free safety on defense. When he leaves the paint area, then it opens things up for the interior. Right there, he's playing 
uh, basically in no man's land uh, here, Georgia State is going to get get a good look at the basket and be able to score. Now they haven't been able to take advantage enough of that, I think. But I think you have to be very careful. As much as if Xavier is going to continue to play that zone, to f you be careful not to fall into the trap of just thinking that you can go bombs away over it. Uh, you've got to get inside, get some penetration, keep that mm -hmm. defense yeah. honest. You can if you keep shooting 50 percent. That's what they're doing <laughs> in that first half. Yep, and you got to quit holding. I saw both teams do that. They was holding and looking. You can't do it against a zone. You got to react. Boom. You got to keep that ball moving. So both teams are going to have to do a better job in the second half of keeping the ball hopping. Georgia State's only hit as many as 10 threes in a game twice this season. They're at four right now at the half and trailing by four. Kentucky highlights coming up when we come back. Coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament is sponsored by Buick. Pizza Hut. The Venture Card from Capital One. And by Game of War. A spot in the Sweet 16 is on the line right now. Start of the second half, moments away. Xavier leads Georgia State by four. Back court side with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. Your first half rebounding numbers Georgia State had five. Matt Stainbrook had six all by himself. Xavier is pounding Georgia State on the glass. So how is Georgia State only down by four? Well, that's certainly why Xavier has the lead. But Georgia State has forced nine turnovers in this game, five steals. They have ten points off turnovers to Xavier's two. That's the only reason they're hanging around. And that's why Chris Mack was talking about that. And I'm sure he told his team at halftime, we got to stop turning it over. And I think they're going to try and get Stainbrook in some different spots instead of in the middle of the floor all the time. Stainbrook scoreless in the last ten minutes of that half as we take a look at the first half numbers and you see the rebound Xavier plus 12 on the glass moments ago Jamie Erdahl caught up with Ron Hunter coach through 20 minutes how comfortable are you feeling with the way you're playing I like where we're at you know it's almost identical to the other night you know they, the other team gets off to a good start we kind of figure out what's going on a little bit and uh, then we put ourselves in a good position you know right now we're down four with our ball right here so we feel good about where we're at right now we got to do a little bit better job defensively though and getting the ball more inside out you know we're a pretty good shooting team but we got to get it inside out and it's got to be comfortable knowing that RJ has hit a couple shots and yet makes him that electrifying score that he is well it does you know he's seen the ball go in. Also, it helps that he knows running mate Ryan Harrell's made a couple baskets, so he doesn't feel like he's got to carry the whole weight. So, again, we've been a great second half team all year. We talked about that on Thursday, so we got to be a great second half team today. Coach, thank you. Coach also added that Ryan Harrell feels exhausted right now coming back from that hamstring injury. They anticipated that, but he is giving them a big boost. No doubt, Jamie Harrell with six points off the bench, and that's where he will start this second half on the bench. Georgia State basketball, they trail by four. The winner moves on to the Sweet 16 Thursday in Los Angeles. And I'm not surprised to see Chris Mack back with the 1-3-1. He's used it more in the last two games than he used it probably most of the year. Foul is on Trayvon Blewett, the freshman out of Indianapolis. That's his third. They've got to get him out. I'm surprised Chris Mack is leaving him. Lewitt has not scored today. He stays in for now. I mean, you can't have this kid pick up his fourth. And you know what? A lot of times in this situation, the guy picks up his fourth like on an offensive foul. He knows not to foul on defense, but it's on offense where you get it a lot of the time. Kreider picked up two fouls in the first, and he has the first two of the second half. Well, James Farr was not in his stance, and he just drove right by him. Georgia State just sticking with this zone. It's been very, very effective. Now, Xavier has made some shots, but they had nine turnovers. Stainbrook with 10 on the shot clock. Washington right on him. Stainbrook right by him. I will say this about Washington. He definitely tried to take the left shoulder away, but he really jumped to that shoulder too much, and Stainbrook went the other way and just laid it right in the basket. 8.6 rebounds for Matt Stainbrook. Crowder. And the tip by Washington is good. Washington had three field goals on Thursday against Baylor, all three on putbacks. And, and you know what it is, Andrew? The hardest zone defense 
to box out of is probably a 1-3-1 because think about it, you have three guys across the foul line area, you're very spread out, and that's what happened there. If you get any penetration, it's going to lead to an offensive rebound. Well, there's Darren Stainbrook to take that shot. He said, I'll pass. Blewett shoots. He's still scoreless, and Hunter the rebound. Georgia State has not led today. Webb ties it at 34. Well, it gets a 1-3-1. It is the baseline in the corners where the weaknesses are. Six points for Kevin Ware. A lot of standing around by Xavier. They've got to get a little bit more movement against this zone. A foul is called on RJ Hunter. He does not agree with that call. That's his second. Well, Staber puts it on the ground, and wow. it's a lot of ball right there. That's a whole lot of ball. That's what Chris Mack told his team. you got to watch Georgia State's defenders from behind. They constantly come from behind and try to knock the ball away. Yeah, they don't, you know, they play a zone, and they don't put a lot of pressure to your face. But if you turn your back on them, they're coming after you hard. Like, there's no pressure really on these guys, but when you get the ball into the teeth of that zone, they got guys coming from everywhere. Abel converts. Seven points for Remy Abel. Oh. Xavier back up two. A little more of that dribble penetration against that zone will definitely help. Abel went to the Sweet 16 with Indiana two years ago before transferring to Xavier. Crowder the look to Washington. If you get the ball in the middle of the floor, good things almost always have to happen no matter what offense you're playing or what defense you're playing against. Hot shooting start for both teams in this second half. We're tied at 36. Miles Davis at the scorer's table for the Musketeers. And a turnover. Number 10 for Xavier today. Well, here's a great pass. You get the ball in the middle of the floor, we're going to get a freeze. But look at Blewett. He's out too far. Now Stainbrook has to go up here, and he has to leave Washington alone. And that's why he ends up with the easy dunk. Xavier had 10 turnovers the entire game on Thursday against Ole Miss. Already 10 here against Georgia State. Green lost it. And a foul is called on Green after he turned it over. And you know, you tell kids all the time, don't let one mistake become two. You lose the ball there, you can't get antsy, and now foul 90 feet from the basket. You lost it, you lost it, go back and play defense. Green had a career high, 11 points on Thursday, has not scored today. Reynolds will take that and make it. Jalen Reynolds has a dozen. He's certainly picking it up after having a poor game the other day. That was a heck of a shot for a 6'10 kick. Two of 12 the other day, four out of five today for the sophomore out of Detroit. Xavier goes back to the man-to-man. -man. Let's see if there's a pick and roll coming by Georgia State. Ryan Harrow off the bench at the scorer's table for the Panthers. the drive against Xavier. That's the first against Remy Abel. A hot start to this second half. Arizona is going to win it. Back to Jacksonville. Andrew. All right, Greg, thank you. And that could set up a potential Massive game on Thursday between Arizona and Xavier. If the Musketeers are to win, it would be Sean Miller going against his former school and his former assistant, Chris Mack. But still a long way to go here in Jacksonville. 15-20 to play, and Xavier's lead is two. Ryan Harrell played 15 minutes in the first half, and he's back in there here for the first time in the second. And a foul is called on Remy Abel. He quickly picks up his second. 
He had that last foul before the timeout as well. Well, R.J. Hunter has got a sneaky, quick first step, and that's what happened to Abel there, just not in his stance ready enough. I mean, he's a good player, and it, you don't want to give him too much room because you know he can shoot it, and he's big, yet he can put it on the floor. He puts you in a tough spot. Georgia State started the game shooting two for eight. Since then, they've gone 67% from the floor. Crowder puts it in, tied up again. You know, he's a four-man in a three-man's body, and he is just a really tough, tough kid. And the official wants the crew to come out. A bit of a wet spot here underneath the basket. We talk about Crowder. Last year, he averaged three points and three rebounds a game. This year, nine points and six and a half rebounds per game. If you're tired of hearing the same sports headlines on repeat, get everything about your favorite teams and get it all first. Download the Team Stream app from Bleacher Report. Georgia State 5 of 6 this half. They've tied the game at 38. Everybody's playing. This is like a man-to-man -man defense. You watch. Everybody's got a man here. And they're pointing people off. This is a true matchup zone. Everybody matched up with a guy. Look at it. Ryder's way out here on Miles Davis. Three on the shot clock. Davis inside. Scoop shot is good. And the way to beat that kind of defense is drive it because there's no help if you're playing that kind of fake man-to-man -man matchup zone. D. Davis had 17 on Thursday, and Chris Max responds. He played like a senior. No doubt that D. Davis helped lead the way for the Musketeers. It to nobody, a miscommunication with Shipes. Fifth I'll be turnover. I'll be honest with you, even if Shipes went there, Stainbrook was there, there was no way that was going to happen. Where comes out Isaiah Dennis, the sophomore from McDonough, Georgia, back in. Such a good pass from D. Davis, I can't tell you. He knew exactly where Miles Davis was. Miles Davis put himself in a spot where he could be seen by D. Davis. That was great play. Remy Abel playing tough defense on R.J. Hunter. Hunter throws one up, no good. He had to get that shot off quickly because Abel was stride for stride with him. Here come the Xavier fans in Jacksonville making some noise. Seven minutes into the second half. Davis with five on the shot clock. Rolls it in to the Reynolds. I think Georgia State could use a timeout. Ron Hunter agrees with you, and he calls timeout. Well, Jalen Reynolds starting to really exert himself on this game with the slam. Well, Xavier's up seven over Georgia State, and look at the Georgia State defense. It looks man-to-man. -man. It is. So Xavier runs a man-to-man -man offensive play, but look at R.J. Hunter. He stops here, and D. Davis keeps going. That's not good defense. Now they end up in no man's land. Miles Davis in the right corner, completely open. That was a mistake. Trying to make that thing look like a zone, but it was man-to-man. -man. They didn't do it. Third three for Miles Davis as we go to Jamie Erdahl. Well, hand-in-hand hand with that Xavier run, expect Georgia State to ramp up the defensive pressure. Ron Hunter just told his team Xavier is too comfortable on offense right now. Seven straight points for the Musketeers. R.J. Hunter has not scored this half. But he finds Crowder for the flush. When the ball goes in the lane, good things happen no matter what defense a team is in. Good, bad things for the defense, good things for the offense. And a foul is called on Xavier. 
Well, Jamie just gave us the lowdown about Ron Hunter, what he said in that huddle. He wanted them to pick up the defense. The worst thing you can do if you're Xavier is stop your dribble against this team in that spot because they are going to trap you when your dribble is dead and you can't go anywhere. Second foul on Jalen Reynolds. What, are they giving Chris Mack a warning? They are. A coach's box warning against Chris Mack. What if Ron Hunter rolls out of his box? Does he get any dispensation or anything there? <laughs> he gets a, he gets some great question. They're gonna have to put a new rule in next year. Can't roll out of your box either. There's Crowder again. Guarded by Reynolds. Poked away by Davis. Great defense by D. Davis. Up the head to Abel. Missed the lane, but he's fouled. Shot does not count. R.J. Hunter picks up his third. Really good defense by D. Davis that time. 11.44 to go. Second half. Ron Hunter's Panthers trail by five. A wild week for Georgia State head coach Ron Hunter coaching with a ruptured left Achilles and his stool is getting a lot of attention these days and he's rolling, he's getting up, <laughs> he's trying not to fall over again. <laughs> and his toes look particularly nice today because his wife Amy forced him to get a pedicure. She was sick of seeing his toes on TV. So yesterday here in Jacksonville, Ron Hunter got a pedicure because of his wife and his response, I didn't even know what a pedicure is. Oh, we got the close up of his toe. Can you imagine? That's a first in basketball history, I don't care. Going into a salon and Ron Hunter is getting his toes done? Whoa. This guy has become a star, 50 years old, in his fourth season at Georgia State. I'm impressed with the tape job on the stool. I've never seen a tape job that good in my life. <laughs> well, his team now trails by six with 11.40 to go. Georgia State gives it back to Xavier, the winner here. We'll see Arizona on Thursday, just a short time ago. The Wildcats knocked off Ohio State, so it could be Sean Miller, the head coach of Arizona, against his former assistant, Chris Mack, if the Musketeers can pull this win out. Xavier has made five straight shots. Well, the big thing for Xavier is they only have two turnovers in the second half. Reynolds has had the hot hand. Still hot. 16 for Jalen Reynolds. you got to go get that kid. And it's a great job by Chris Mack. His team much more under control now. Not turning the ball over and getting a good opportunity every time down against that defense. And it's the Panthers who have started turning it over with three in their last five possessions. Hunter scoreless in this half. Blocked. Miles Davis calling for it in the corner. And he lost it out of bounds. Chris Mack is saying that went off a Georgia State player. It did. We'll see if Jamie Lucky, that's a good call. They overturn it. One of the frustrating things for Ron Hunter in this stool is that he has said he's not able to really communicate well with his players, as you see the replay here. He also can't get close to the refs in that stool either. They like it. <laughs> Reynolds gives it right back, and then Reynolds commits the foul. Well, they warned Chris Mack about being out of the coaching box. They probably would like him on a stool, too. That's the third foul on Jalen Reynolds with 10.27 to go. I think it's a good guy to take out for a minute or two. That's all, not a lot. Three fouls is fine with 10 minutes to go, but better with eight minutes to go.
Remy Abel continues to play lockdown defense. Hunter still can't get on the board here in the second half. Shipes back out to where? Remy Abel is doing a great job on RJ Hunter. He's trying not to let him catch the ball, which is the best thing to do with a scorer. Try and deny him touches, and then he can't hurt you. He's just denying everything, Remy Abel, number 10. Where? 17 footer way off, and a foul is called on Miles Davis. Chris Mack not happy about that one. Well, Miles Davis didn't argue it. This is just the third time that Georgia State will go to the free throw line today. They're 0 for 2 so far. First free throw today for Kevin Ware and the Georgia State Panthers. And what an incredible story. Kevin Ware continues to be. And it was his emotional speech on Sunday after Georgia State won the Sun Belt Championship. He got on the bus and had this emotional talk with his team about not taking this opportunity for granted, being in the NCAA tournament, something that he knows very well after breaking his leg at Louisville two years ago. He didn't know if he'd be back on this big stage, and here he is playing in the NCAA tournament. His team trails by six. Now they're trying something a little more aggressive, a 1-3-1 one, one defense, and with R.J. Hunter on top as the guy in the middle, he makes it hard for you to reverse the ball in this defense. He's got a big wingspan. Oh, that's a great track right there. Perfect. Davis gets rid of it. Abel out to blue it. points of the game, the freshman with the triple. Once they let D. Davis out of the trap, they were in trouble because then they're four against three, and that's why there was someone wide open on the wing. Crowder continues to play well inside. He's in double figures with ten points. Senior out of Bloomington, Indiana, to Davis. Not this time. And the rebound is corralled by Blewett, who is fouled by Shipes. Now, once they let D. Davis out of this trap, as you're going to see here, look what happens to the other side of the floor. Stop. Now it's two against one right there. So once he gets through that trap, that's a problem for Georgia State. And that's why, with the good penetration, they get a wide open three by Blewett. Fourth team foul against the Panthers. Xavier with six in this second half. Davis wants another three. This time he knocks it down. His fourth triple of the day. Xavier is doing a very good job of getting Georgia State spread out a little bit on defense, and Miles Davis just taking advantage of it. RJ Hunter, the offensive rebound off the green miss. Hunter finally scores here in the second half. Took him more than 12 minutes. Big time move right there with the left hand. the man to man stuff against this matchup. I think it's a great move by Chris Mack. He's attacking this zone like it's man to man, and it is man to man. Wow, foul is called on Xavier. Foul goes against Stainbrook, his second with 7.20 to go. Xavier leads by eight. We're back with our game summary. Xavier is shooting 66% from the floor, yet it's an eight-point game as we check in with Jamie Erdahl. Well, during that timeout, Matt Stainbrook visibly
visibly frustrated with his play in the second half. And that was even before he found out he was being subbed out, in which point you see him throw a towel in frustration at the bench. The rest of the timeout, though, for Xavier was very businesslike. D. Davis did have a conversation with him to hone the senior back in. I like it that D. Davis was telling him to chill out. Now, that's a senior, and that's what a senior is supposed to do. And not that Matt, he's frustrated. He's a senior, too, but good job by D. Davis there. And the foul on Stainbrook was his third. Blewett and Reynolds also with three. And for Georgia State, R.J. Hunter has three fouls. Out of the timeout. Shipes inside a tough two. That was a really good ball movement, though. And coach, we should point out Ryan Harrell has not played much here in the second half. Far, and a foul is called inside. Nearly a turnover by Xavier, but instead it's a foul against Georgia State. That's the third against Shipes. And now Stainbrook is coming back in. Xavier is doing a much better job in this half of getting movement. And that's what you need to do against this defense. Make it hard for them to match you up and make it look more like man-to-man. -man. And when you cut and move, that will really give away what kind of defense it is. Wow. Off the inbound and a foul is called on Kreider. Well, look at Kreider. He's not looking at the ball. He's just looking here, and what happens? They just throw it over his head. He has no idea where the ball is. You got to see the ball and see your man. We see that happen a lot of out of bounds plays under the basket. Stainbrook misses the first. His father, Dave, is here in the hat on the right. Played football at Ohio, and he's now an engineer at NASA. Helped build a spacesuit, and we talked with Matt about it yesterday. And we said, "Are you going to work in NASA one day?" He goes, "I stink at science, yes. but I'm good at math. I'm good at math." And he's getting his master's in finance. And he wants to own a restaurant one day, but you're not going to see him at the space station anytime soon. Last touch by Remy Abel with 621 to play. Georgia State has scored on four straight trips. They trail by seven. Shipes. And a foul is called. And that's going against Blewett, which is his fourth. So Miles Davis hops off the bench. Blew it, another tough day. Came into this game shooting just two for 11. And today the freshman one out of three. You can watch Masters Live on CBSSports.com for exclusive video of Amen Corner, 15 and 16, two featured groups, plus highlights and analysis. Watch on CBSSports.com and Masters.com. Shipes comes up empty at the line. Georgia State has still only made two free throws today. And the Panthers got a hand on that one. A turnover by Xavier. That's their 14th. Hunter for three. tried to sell the charge and when he falls on the floor that's what left rj hunter alone so it's okay to try and sell that charge but sometimes you sell it you're out of the play because you're on the floor a delay of game warning just issued to georgia state after that last bucket by hunter d davis nowhere to go Ron Hunter thought it was a double dribble, no call. 
Yeah, the referee must have thought he got knocked out of his hand. We were blocked off there. Hunter has that look in his eye right now like he did the other night. And a foul is called on Abel. And that means a one and one for R.J. Hunter. Well, you're going to see D. Davis right there. No, he didn't double dribble. But I'll say this, the one guy you don't want to send to the free throw line, that was a heck of a play by D. Davis. This is the one guy you don't want to send to the free throw line, let me tell you. 87% on the season, 22nd in the country. And he was 4-4 of four in the win over Baylor on Thursday. Makes the first. 14 points for R.J. Hunter with his mom, Amy, looking on. Hunter has the most points of any junior in the country. 1,813. 1,814. Timeout, Georgia State with 5.05 to go. It's a four-point game in Jacksonville. We're back in Jacksonville, Florida. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. We had a wild day here on Thursday with three of the four games coming down to the final possession. And with 5.05 to go in this one, we've got a four-point game. A look at our tournament summary. And UCLA earlier today advancing to its second straight Sweet 16. And Kentucky marches on, and Arizona beats Ohio State. So the winner of our game here will see Arizona on Thursday in the Sweet 16. You know, the officials want to go back and look at this three by R.J. Hunter. That's clearly yeah. a three. Now they're coming with the three-quarter court pressure. Inside five minutes to go. Xavier has to continue to attack this defense. This is man-to-man. -man. They should run their man stuff. It's a switching man-to-man. -man. Seven on the shot clock. Reynolds with five. They swing it to Davis looking for his fifth three. It won't go. R.J. Hunter the rebound. Haven't been able to get Stainbrook any touches. Hunter for three. And the rebound to Reynolds. That was in a similar spot to his game-winning three on Thursday. R.J. Hunter has not come out this entire game. They've done a good job of keeping the ball out of Stainbrook's hands. We talked about how he's a playmaker. He's an assist guy as well as a scorer. He's been up at that foul line the whole game. Reynolds spins, shoots, and scores! Jalen Reynolds with 18. Probably good reason. You have Jalen Reynolds down low. Still no Ryan Harrow for Georgia State. He's been on the bench for the majority of this second half. Yeah, I'm going to guess we're not seeing him. Kreider, offensive foul is called against Kreider. Ron Hunter almost fell off his stool again. That's the fourth on Kreider. Timeout on the floor. 3.27 to go. Georgia State looking for some more late magic. They trail by six. A spot in the Sweet 16 is up for grabs. Xavier leads Georgia State by six. Time now for the degree game-changing moments. Yeah, they had D. Davis bottled up, but they let him step through the trap. And let's face it, if you get the ball out of the trap, now you are four against three. And Xavier was able to take advantage of that, get it in, and kick it to blew it for the open three. For more degree game-changing moments, log on to NCAA.com slash game-changing moments. Well, Xavier is shooting 66%. The last team to shoot 65% or better in a tournament game, North Carolina, against Arkansas back in 2008. That's our night game here tonight in Jacksonville. And I want to put it in perspective, too. Georgia State has held 11 people under 30% this year. That's second only to Kentucky. Davis is fouled at midcourt, and Ron Hunter again spinning 
around his stool does not like that call. And it's a one and one for the Musketeers. Yeah, he doesn't like it because he's got him stuck there at the half court line. That's a great place to trap, and he thought he was going to get a good trap there. Oh, wow. I don't know about that. They call it on the right of green. Ball. Now, D. Davis at the line, one and one. That's a big play. Take a look at Ron Hunter's reaction. A little spinorama on the Georgia State sideline. He did a 360. Matt Stainbrook is coming out and blew it with the four fouls is back in. What's happening is Georgia State is playing kind of smallish now, and Xavier's off that off and offset that by playing a little smaller themselves. Hunter bounces to Shipes. Well, obviously, Shipes does not want to shoot the ball. Inside three minutes to play. And we have a whistle. Against Xavier. Away from the ball on D. Davis. <laughs> and now Chris Mack can't believe it. It's a one and one for Georgia State. Actually, that's the tenth foul. That's two shots for the Panthers. People think coaching is easy. What happened there? I mean... Wow, it's a foul on Xavier? That's what was called. Coaching, I'll tell you something. <laughs> You're happy here at the table, aren't you? I like being with you here, yeah. <laughs> Stainbrook at the scorer's table, and it's two shots for Shipes. Now, he's just a 49% free throw shooter, and he's 0 for 2 today. I'm not going to lie to you, though. In two minutes and 55 seconds, I'd love to be the winner. <laughs> Well, with 2.54 to go on Thursday, Baylor was up 12. Georgia State went on a 13-0 run. 2.55 to go. They trail by six. Can they do it again? Well, this definitely is man-to-man. -man. They got to run their man stuff, try and get the ball into Reynolds. He's been terrific down in the low post. Chris Mack calling out a play from the Xavier sideline. The Musketeers using the shot clock here. That's a man play. 2.30 to go in the game. Seven to shoot. Davis inside. Reynolds and the foul. And Jalen Reynolds now has a new career high with 20 points. Well, this is great dribble penetration. And then when Shipes comes over to help, Nobody helps the helper, and you see that happen a lot when there's dribble penetration. If somebody's going to rotate to help you, somebody's got to help you on the backside. And in the process, Marcus Crowder has picked up his fifth foul. And he's by far their best inside scorer. Officials were not aware, but now Crowder, who's still on the court, is going to have to come out. He's trying to sneak in there. So now, where does Ron Hunter turn on his bench? Harrow stays there, and it's Isaiah Dennis that comes off. He might as well go small, small. That's what he's doing. Dennis does not provide much from beyond the arc. He's 0 for 1 this year. I'm surprised he hasn't gone back to Washington. Now, Washington only has one foul, but he remains on the bench. points in the game. Meanwhile, Jalen Reynolds with a career night. 21 points, 8 of 9 from the floor. And Xavier counters the small lineup by taking Stainbrook out and also going small. Good move by Chris Mack. They've got to get R.J. Hunter. He's just got to take somebody. He's the only shooter on the floor right now. They go inside to Shipes. And Ron Hunter calls timeout with 2.02 to go. This team has chipped away before, trying to do it again.
One timeout remains for Georgia State. They trail by seven. The winner will see Arizona in the Sweet 16 on Thursday in Los Angeles. Will it be a reunion between Chris Mack and his former boss, Sean Miller? When Miller left for Arizona, Mack was promoted to head coach. Now in his sixth season with the Musketeers, he's been in the NCAA tournament five of his six years. Well, now they're coming with the full court. Man-to-man -man press, it looks like here. Try and get in a trap in the corner if they can. Possession arrow, as you saw, favors Xavier. Inside two minutes to play. Don't have to start fouling, just gotta play solid and get a rebound and then push it up. Both teams shooting two shots the rest of the game. And Xavier doing what they need to do, which is take your time. I think they should continue to attack, but make it an attack where you're gonna use up clock. Miles Davis for three. He's good! His fifth three, that ties a career high. That's good offense. I love that they were still probing and not just holding it, and that's why they were able to knock that out. Stay aggressive. Hunter trying to answer, and he is fouled. You know, when a team is aggressive and they're coming out trying to trap you and stuff, you got to be look for a shot like that. If you can't just pass the ball around and, and kill the clock if you got a good one, especially minute and 40 to go, up seven, time to still be aggressive. This is why you got to love this tournament. Last four games, Miles Davis was three of 17 from beyond the arc. Tonight, he's five out of eight. And how, about with Jay, 15. and how about what Jalen Reynolds did the other night? And look at him tonight. So you got two guys stepping up big time that played bad the other night. And Reynolds not on the floor right now because he's not a very good free throw shooter at just 63%. Chris Mack pushing all the right buttons. This team is really good in the half court offensively. Played very well together. One sixteen to go, an eight-point game. Only one timeout left for the Panthers. Nearly a steal by Ryan Green. Do you foul here? Yeah, you got a foul now. You're eight. Got a foul. And they foul the second best free throw shooter in the Big East, Miles Davis, 86% on the season. It'll be two shots, both teams in the double bonus. Well, you're Georgia State, now you just got to take this thing and push it up, score as quickly as you can, probably taking it to the basket because Xavier won't want to foul. If you get a three, obviously you're going to take it and then call your last time out and set up your press. Really, the only three-point shooter on the floor is R.J. Hunter for Georgia State. Ryan Harrow is still on the bench. He shoots 39% from deep, but he's not coming in. Well, that's basically been the deal with them for two games. It just so happened that Ryan Green in that last game made three threes, but he had a career high of 11 points that day. But Harrow made two threes in the first half. He, he sits be, on the bench. He must be hurting. And Xavier calls a timeout. 103 to go. The lead is 10. A look at the bracket in the West region. Xavier trying to join Arizona in the Sweet 16. And coming up next here on TNT from Jacksonville, the 4 5 game in the West between North Carolina and Arkansas. What a night for Jalen Reynolds, a new career high with 21 points. Well, he's been terrific. Eight out of nine from the field. He's even hit jump shots. He's been tough around the basket, dunks. He's done everything. And that's the reason why Stainbrook hasn't been as involved. Give Chris Mack a lot of credit. He sees what's going on out here. He knows it's Jalen Reynolds. Reynolds night, so guess what, Matt Stainbrook? You're going to stay outside a little bit more, and we're going to feed him down in the low post. I think Chris Mack has pushed some great buttons in this game tonight. Final minute here in Jacksonville. They got to go quick, and this is not quick. Hunter 
Butler trying to free up some space. He drives inside, counted in the foul. I mean, I know Chris Mack is up six. I think he thinks his guy backed away from that. One of Xavier, one of uh, Reynolds' teammates said, let him go, don't foul. And that's exactly the opposite happened. That's the fourth on Jalen Reynolds. Yeah, they used up enough time, so that was a good possession for Xavier. If, even if he scores, as long as you don't foul, that's a good possession. Because they used like 25 seconds to do that. Hunter trying to finish off the three-point play. Al McGuire saying years ago, you play, you're playing against the clock now. You're not playing against Georgia State anymore. You're playing against that clock. 44.5 on the clock. R.J. Hunter has nine points in the last 5.05, and he has 20 for the game. And we have a whistle on Green before Xavier could inbound. That's you know, okay for Georgia State. Yeah, and that's one of those where you say, mm, you know, I know it, should, it wasn't an intentional foul because he's coming to the ball. But those fouls in this situation where the clock doesn't run, I think you have to think about calling an intentional foul. Because that's a huge advantage for Georgia State to get a foul without any time ticking off the clock. D. Davis, two of three at the line tonight. And Chris Mack's kids starting to celebrate. Laney is nine years old. Haley is eight. And there is his wife, Christy, is holding their third, a son, Braden, born December 8th. You notice the adult didn't look like she was ready to celebrate no, yet. I don't not know yet. If you saw just that. the kids. Yeah, right. Kids are ready. Adults not ready yet. They had a nice moment yesterday morning here in Jacksonville. Chris took the kids to the beach for two hours. Chris loves to fish. His escape, his release, is being on the water. So they walked on the beach for a couple hours. They were looking for shark's teeth, but Chris said it was high tide. So all they found was a bunch of jellyfish. But still, a peaceful morning amongst, amidst the madness here of March. Nine-point lead, final 40 seconds. Green knocks down the 15-footer. Ron Hunter does not call his timeout, still has one left, and a foul. And Davis is going back to the line. That was a dangerous pass. That's on R.J. Hunter, and that's his, oh no, they call it on Green, which is his fifth, so Ryan Green is out of the game. That was almost like a wide, you know the football stuff, that was like a wide receiver catching it in heavy coverage right there. So Green, after a career-high 11 on Thursday, just two points tonight. And this tells you all you need to know about Ryan Harrow as Jordan Session comes off the bench and not Harrow. Green, a senior, three years as a walk-on. They thought so highly of him that they gave him a scholarship for his senior year, and they held a signing day ceremony with his family. That's really nice. An incredible run at Georgia State for Ryan Green, named captain here in his senior season. His game the other day, he will never forget. No one at Georgia State will. That's right. Hunter will take that three. Rebound Dennis, lost it to D. Davis, and fouled underneath with 20 seconds to go, and they can taste it on the Xavier bench. And how about Chris Mack, his third Sweet 16. Third all-time in wins at Xavier. Grew up in Cincinnati, played at St. Xavier High School. A two-time captain at Xavier under Pete Gillen. And now Xavier on the verge of returning to the Sweet 16. This school just has a tremendous tradition. Think about every coach that's been there has been a successful guy. And how about this? R.J. Hunter out for the final time. A huge hug for his father, Ron. Mom and wife Amy watches on in what could be the final time in a Georgia State uniform for R.J. Hunter. He's a junior, 
projected to be a first round pick. Ron Hunter said he'll do everything possible to get his son to stay for his senior year, but that decision will come in the next couple of weeks. Kevin Ware also on the bench. He has one more year at Georgia State. Twenty points tonight for R.J. Hunter. As that three is knocked in by Jalen Brown, it was an incredible week for Georgia State. They captured the hearts of America. But the magic carpet ride comes to an end as Xavier advances to the Sweet 16. Xavier in the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2012. They will take on Arizona on Thursday in Los Angeles. But thanks for the memories to Georgia State. And R.J. Hunter, his father Ron Hunter, who scoots away for one last time this season. Father and son walk off the court together. Must be a great feeling, as much as they wanted to win. Ron Hunter said yesterday, I wish every dad in America could have that opportunity, what I have experienced this week with my son. Xavier onto the Sweet 16. Here's Jamie Erdahl with Chris Mack. Coach, your team ends up shooting nearly 67% from the field. How much did that help them offensively to really loosen them up in the second half? Well, I thought if we took care of the ball, I thought we our size inside, they would really struggle to guard. But they do a great job of, of going for loose balls and, and creating loose balls and, you know, turning people over. Fourth in the country. And I think our guys needed that first half to realize, you know, how effective they are at that. And to talk about the elephant in the room, how about Jalen Reynolds' day? Uh, he was a heck of an elephant today. He had a bad performance the, uh, last game. I'm really proud of him because I've been talking to him all year about next play mentality and being able to turn the page and not play like there's a rain cloud over his head. And he did that today. How about taking on your former boss and Sean Miller in Los Angeles? Honestly, it stinks. You know, Sean was so good to me. And I mean it stinks from a personal standpoint. You know, we're going to go out there and we're going to compete. We know Arizona is unbelievably talented, well coached, and going to play really hard. Um, but, you know, it just it stinks when, when people that are really close to you and they gave you the opportunity that Sean did, uh, you have to face one another. But I'd rather face him in a tournament uh, maybe than a regular season game. Congratulations, Coach. Jalen, a career high for you, 21 points today. What was Georgia State doing defensively that allowed things to open up for you? Uh, they were just opening up the lane for me. I was just trying to just take good shots. And just take my time in the post and just and just finish down low. The way this team is playing right now, how Paul, how helpful is it? I'm gonna back you up so North Carolina can warm up. How helpful is it that things are spreading out for you guys offensively as you move forward to the Sweet 16? Uh, we just want to just stay humble and just stay ready. Uh, sky's the limit for us if we just if we just keep our heads on straight and be ready to play. Congratulations. Thank you so much. A wing from Jalen Reynolds. What a night for the sophomore out of Detroit. And now, as Chris Mack mentioned, he'll be going against his good friend and former boss, Sean Miller in Arizona, Thursday in the Sweet 16 in Los Angeles. Georgia State and Xavier combined to shoot 61% from the floor. That's the highest in a tournament game in 20 years. Tune in to CBS and TBS now for live third round games. And coming up on TNT, it's Arkansas against North Carolina.
we will send you to our studio after these messages. Xavier, on to the Sweet 16.